Greetings, YouTube community. Today, we bring you a compelling story that spans the realms of faith, perseverance, and overcoming adversity. We delve into the life of Pastor Creflo Dollar, a prominent figure in the world of ministry who faced a tragedy that tested his faith and resilience. This is a tale of triumph over tragedy. Stick around and let's explore Pastor Creflo Dollar's remarkable journey. In June 2012, Dollar was arrested for an alleged attack on his 15-year-old daughter. According to the Fayette County, Georgia, Sheriff's Office, Dollar was accused of choking and punching the girl, a story corroborated by Dollar's older daughter and Fayette County Police released details of a subsequent 911 call. Megachurch pastor Creflo Dollar has taken to his pulpit to deny punching and choking his 15-year-old daughter, telling his congregation the allegations made in a police report are nothing but exaggeration and sensationalism. I will say this emphatically. I should have never been arrested. Dollar said Sunday in his first public appearance two days after police charged him with misdemeanor counts of simple battery and cruelty to children. The pastor got an enthusiastic ovation from the packed church as he took the pulpit at the World Changers Church International in the Atlanta suburb of College Park. He addressed the criminal charges head-on for several minutes before moving on to his sermon. I want you all to hear personally from me that all is well in the Dollar household, Dollar said. The 50-year-old Dollar is one of the most prominent African-American preachers based around Atlanta with 30,000 members in the Atlanta area and a ministry of satellite churches across the U.S. He was arrested after his 15-year-old daughter called 911 at about 1 a.m. Friday and told a Fayette County Sheriff's deputy that she and her father argued when he said she couldn't go to a party. A police report says the girl told a deputy her father charged at her, put his hands around her throat, began to punch her and started hitting her with his shoe. The deputy noted a scratch on her neck. The report said the deputy also interviewed Dollar's 19-year-old daughter, who said her father grabbed her sister's shoulders and slapped her in the face and choked her for about five seconds. She said her sister tried to break free but did not fight back. When her father threw the 15-year-old on the floor, the older girl ran to get her mother. Dollar's wife, Kathy, told the deputy she did not see the fight. Dollar launched into a lengthy denial of the allegations from the pulpit. The truth is that a family conversation with our youngest daughter got emotional, he said, and emotions got involved and things escalated from there. He said the mark on his daughter's neck had been there for about 10 years and was caused by a skin condition, eczema. The truth is she was not choked. She was not punched. There were not any scratches on her neck, Dollar said but the only thing on her neck was a prior skin abrasion from eczema. Anything else is exaggeration and sensationalism. Dollar didn't publicly display any anger toward his children. I will never put any fault on my children, as Jesus would never put any fault on me, he said. Dollar's wife is a co-pastor at the church. She addressed the congregation before her husband, but did not touch on the allegations. Dollar's congregation appeared supportive Sunday giving him sustained applause as he took the stage. As he spoke, people in the sanctuary yelled encouragement, we love you, and we've got your back. As he talked about the difficulty dealing with teenage children in a culture of disrespect, many in the crowd nodded in agreement. Members of the church seemed to close ranks around Dollar even before he addressed them. Dozens of people approached by the Associated Press as they arrived for the service declined to comment and the few who did express support. After the service, many were still reluctant to comment, but those who did said they were satisfied with their pastor's comments. When I first heard what he was accused of, I didn't believe it. I knew there had to be more to the story, said Phyllis Awoli, 23, a daycare worker who has attended the church for about five years. I felt like he addressed the accusations today, and I believe what he said. To hear from him personally, I really appreciated that. I was glad to hear his side of the story. Others said the media blew the accusations out of proportion without having all the facts and they felt vindicated after hearing Dollar speak. I think you're looking at a bunch of sensationalism, 
said George Blake of Ellenwood, adding that he thought the media rushed to tell the story without knowing the full story. The 49-year-old said he never questioned his pastor of eight years. Dollar is known for controversial teachings regarding prosperity theology. He has long been criticized for living a lavish lifestyle. He owns two Rolls Royces, a private jet, and high-end real estate such as a million-dollar home in Atlanta, a $2.5 million home in Demarest, New Jersey, and a home in Manhattan that he bought for $2.5 million in 2006, equivalent to $3.6 million in 2022, and sold for $3.75 million in 2012, equivalent to $4.78 million in 2022. Dollar has refused to disclose his salary for declining to disclose any financial information to independent audit. Creflo Dollar Ministries received a grade of F, failing, for financial transparency by the organization Ministry Watch. Dollar was among six televangelists who were the subject of a 2007 investigation led by United States Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa as ranking member of the Senate Finance Committee. Grassley asked for financial information to determine whether Dollar made any personal profit from financial donations and requested that Dollar's ministry make the information available by December 6, 2007. The investigation also asked for information from five other televangelists. Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, Eddie L. Long, Joyce Mayer, and Paula White. Dollar contested the probe arguing that the proper governmental entity to examine religious groups is the IRS, not the Committee on Finance. Dollar and three others were not cooperative, and the probe concluded in 2011 without any charges. In the aftermath of the tragedy, Pastor Creflo Dollar underwent a period of introspection and spiritual growth. He openly shared his struggles, emphasizing the importance of faith, forgiveness, and the transformative power of God's grace. Despite the challenges, Pastor Dollar emerged from the dark days with resilience and determination. He continued to lead his ministry, rebuilding not only the physical aspects, but also focusing on the spiritual and emotional healing of his congregation. In the face of tragedy, Pastor Creflo Dollar's story teaches us about the power of resilience and faith. It's a reminder that even those in positions of spiritual leadership are not exempt from life's hardships. If you found this story inspiring, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more thought-provoking content. Until next time, stay strong, stay inspired, and keep the faith.